Instant film is a type of photographic film introduced by Polaroid to be used in an instant camera. The film contains the chemicals needed for developing and fixing the photograph, and the instant camera exposes and initiates the developing process after a photo has been taken. In earlier Polaroid instant cameras the film is pulled through rollers which breaks open a pod containing a reagent that is spread between the exposed negative and receiving positive sheet. This film sandwich develops for some time after which the positive sheet is peeled away from the negative to reveal the developed photo. In 1972, Polaroid introduced integral film, which incorporated timing and receiving layers to automatically develop and fix the photo without any intervention from the photographer. Instant film is available in sizes from 24 mm x 36 mm up to 50.8 cm x 61 cm size, with the most popular film sizes for consumer snapshots being approximately 83 mm x 108 mm. The image itself is smaller as it is surrounded by a border. Early instant film was distributed on rolls, but later and current films are supplied in packs of 8 or 10 sheets, and single sheet films for use in large format cameras with a compatible back. Though the quality of integral instant film is not as good as conventional film, peel apart black and white film, and to a lesser extent color film approached the quality of traditional film types. Instant film was used where it was undesirable to have to wait for a roll of conventional film to be finished and processed, for example, documenting evidence in law enforcement, in healthcare and scientific applications, and producing photographs for passports and other identity documents, or simply for snapshots to be seen immediately. Some photographers use instant film for test shots, to see how a subject or setup looks before using conventional film for the final exposure. Instant film is also used by artists to achieve effects that are impossible to accomplish with traditional photography, by manipulating the emulsion during the developing process, or separating the image emulsion from the film base. Instant film is notable for having had a wider range of film speeds available than other negative films of the same era, having been produced in ISO 4 to ISO 20000. Current instant film formats typically have an ISO between 100 and 1000. Two companies manufacture instant film, Fujifilm, Instax Integral Film, and the impossible project for older Polaroid cameras. How it works. Instant positive film, which produced a print, uses diffusion transfer to move the dyes from the negative to the positive via a reagent. The process varies according to the film type. Roll slash pack film in 1947 Edward H. Land introduced the Polaroid Land process. The first instant films produced sepia tone photos. A negative sheet is exposed inside the camera, then lined up with a positive sheet and squeezed through a set of rollers which spread a reagent between the two layers, creating a developing film sandwich. The negative develops quickly, after which some of the unexposed silver halide grains, and the latent image it contains, are solubilized by the reagents and transferred by diffusion from the negative to the positive. After a minute, depending on film type and ambient temperature, the negative is peeled away to reveal the photo which was transferred to the positive receiving sheet. True black and white films were released in 1950 after problems with chemistry stabilization were overcome. Subtractive color films Color film is much more complex due to multiple layers of emulsion and dye. The negative consists of three emulsion layers sensitive to the primary colors, red, green, and blue each with a layer of developing dye beneath it of the complementary color, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Once light exposed the negative, the reagent is spread between the negative and positive and the developing dye layer migrates to the positive surface where it forms the photo. Emulsion layers exposed to their respective color block the complementary dye below it, reproducing the original color. For example, a photo of a blue sky would expose the blue emulsion blocking all the yellow dye beneath it and allowing the magenta and cyan dye layers to migrate to the positive to form blue. Integral film This process is similar to subtractive color instant film with added timing and receiving layers. 
Land's solution was incorporate an opacifier, which would darken when ejected from the camera, and then become clear to reveal the photograph. The film itself integrates all the layers to expose, develop, and fix the photo into a plastic envelope and frame commonly associated with a Polaroid photo. Additive color film additive film, such as Polar Vision and Polar Chrome slide film, uses a color mask of microscopically thin transparent red, green, and blue lines, 3000 lines per inch, and a black and white emulsion layer to reproduce color images in transparency film. The resulting dye developers, unexposed emulsion, block the colors not needed and project the color or combination of colors which form in the resulting image. Since the lines are so close to each other, the human eye easily blended the primary colors together to form the correct color, much like an LCD display or television. For instance, a photo of a yellow flower would expose the emulsion beneath the red and green masks and not the blue mask. The developing process removed the exposed emulsion, under the red and green masks, and diffused the unexposed dye developer, under the blue mask, to its receiving layer, blocking light from coming through. This resulted in the projected light shining through the red and green masks but not the blue mask, creating the color yellow. Because of the film density, film speeds were necessarily slow. High precision was required for the production of this film. Film Brands Polaroid A sample shot of Polaroid Type 600, ISO 640, Color Film Polaroid Corporation invented and produced the widest range of instant film. Roll film was distributed in two separate negative and positive rolls and developed inside the camera. It was introduced in 1948 and was manufactured until 1992. Sheet film was introduced in 1958 for 4x5 film holder number 500. Each sheet contains a reagent pot, negative and receiving positive, and was loaded separately and developed outside the film holder. In 1973 Polaroid introduced 8x10 instant film. Pack film was distributed in a film pack which contained both negative and positive sheets and was developed outside the camera. It was introduced in 1963. Integral film is also distributed in a film pack, but each film envelope contains all the chemical layers to expose, develop, and fix the photo. It was introduced in 1972. Polar Vision was an instant motion picture film. Polar Vision was introduced by Polaroid in 1978, with an image format similar to Super 8mm film and based on an additive color process. Polar Vision required a specific camera and tabletop viewer, and was not a commercial success, but did lead to the development of an instant 35mm color slide film. Polar Vision film has been taken off the market. Polar Chrome was an easy to develop 35mm film, available in color, monochrome and blue formats, the latter intended for making title cards. Each roll of film came with a cartridge containing developing chemicals which were pressed between the film and a developing strip by a hand-cranked machine called the auto processor. The auto processor was very cheap and did not require a dark room, the results were somewhat variable. The resolution was not as good as conventional film due to the matrix of tiny red, green and blue filters required to make the monochrome emulsion work in color, and the sensitivity was low, even for slide film. In tungsten light, Polar Chrome CS is rated at ISO 40. It was introduced in 1983. Polaroid integral film packs usually contain a flat polar pulse electrical battery, which powers systems in the camera, including exposure and focusing mechanisms, electronic flash, and a film ejection motor. The inclusion of the battery within the film pack ensures that a fresh battery is available with each new pack of film. Polaroid no longer produces instant film. It has become an organization which licenses its brand name to other manufacturers. An example of this is the Polaroid 300 camera, which is a Polaroid branded Fujian Stax. Polaroid P300 film is essentially rebranded Fujian Stax mini film. Preservation Polaroids have the same storage standards under ISO 18920-2000 as any other photograph. 
regular storage conditions should be less than 70 degrees Fahrenheit and between 50% and 30% relative humidity. Cold storage, 0 degrees Fahrenheit optimum, is not helpful unless H can be controlled and cold storage H is generally drier than required. H below 30% will create an environment that is too dry and may cause the photograph to curl. A Polaroid transfer removes the emulsion from the plastic backing and residual chemicals, offering an alternate form of preservation. In February 2008, Polaroid announced it would cease production of all instant film, the company shut down three factories and laid off 450 workers. Sales of chemical film by all makers have dropped by at least 25% per year since 2000, but a new birth of interest around Fujifilm and, in particular, the impossible project films fulfilled demand in the market. Kodak Kodak manufactured the negative component of Polaroid's instant film from 1963 to 1969, when Polaroid decided to manufacture its own. Kodak's original plan was to create pack film type instant products. There were many prototypes and test runs of the film with many private demonstrations to their board. Plans changed when Polaroid in 1972 released the integral type film with the introduction of the SX-70 system. Kodak decided to scrap the plans for pack film release and focus on an integral type process. A few years later Kodak introduced its own instant film products in 1976, which was different from Polaroids in several ways. Kodak instant film was exposed from the back without a mirror, the opposite of Polaroid's film which was exposed from the front with a mirror to reverse the image. Kodak used a matte finish on the front, made possible by exposing the film through the back. The negative and empty pod could be removed by peeling it off of the back of the print. Unlike Polaroid's integral film packs, Kodak's did not contain a battery, and used conventional batteries. Kodak's Prairie 10 film was found to have light fading stability issues. Polaroid filed suit against Eastman Kodak in April 1976 for the infringement of 10 patents held by Edwin Land and others on his development team relating to instant photography. In September 1985, the United States District Court of Massachusetts ruled that seven patents were valid and infringed. Two were invalid but infringed, and one was valid but not infringed by Kodak. Kodak appealed but was denied and an injunction prohibiting production of their instant film and cameras was put into effect. Kodak's appeal to the Supreme Court was denied a few months later, and in January 1986, Kodak announced it would no longer be producing their instant line of products. In 1991, Polaroid was awarded $925 million in damages from Kodak. Alternative Kodak Instant Film While Kodak Instant Films have been discontinued, Fuji's Instant Film available in Japan since the 1980s is very similar to Kodak's. The pictures are the same size, the cartridge is almost the same, with some easy plastic modifications, the Fuji Photorama series film can be made to fit. It was closest to the Kodak with the ISO at 160. Many of the camera's brightness controls can be adjusted to work with the different ISO, however, the FI-10 series was discontinued in the 1990s. The faster ISO 800 instant films will work as well but would require the use of a filter either on the film cartridge or lens, Fujifilm. In Japan, Fujifilm introduced their own line of instant photographic products in 1981 starting with the Photorama line of cameras. The name Photorama came from Photograph and Panorama, as the film was a wide format compared to the square Polaroid SX-7600 films. These integral films developed similar to Kodak's with the back layer first. This presented a major problem for Fujifilm because of the ongoing litigation between Kodak and Polaroid. Polaroid also has a separate suit with Fujifilm and their instant film patents in Japan. When Kodak lost, Fujifilm was able to work with Polaroid to allow their cameras and films to remain in the market, provided that they have a technology sharing agreement. 
Polaroid was interested in branching out to magnetic media in the boom of the videotape era and had acquired a company called Magmedia Limited. Fujifilm has a long history in magnetic media dating to the mid 1950s. This led to Polaroid having access to Fujifilm's extensive electronic, videotape, and floppy disk magnetic products. This allowed Fujifilm access to Polaroid's film technology. By the mid 1980s, Fujifilm introduced the higher ISO system 800 series, followed by the ACE series in the mid 1990s. Instant ACE is nearly identical to system 800. The only difference is the design of the plastic cartridge in the ACE do not contain the spring mechanism. The spring is in the camera. Most of these products were available only in the Japanese market, until the release of Instax series of cameras was released in 1998. Fujifilm originally wanted to release the Instax series worldwide including North America and Europe simultaneously, but decided to work with Polaroid on the Mio camera based on the Instax Mini 10 for the US market, while Canada did get the Instax Wide 100. Another product was Fujifilm's digital Instax PIVI film for their battery-powered portable printer which was made available for those who wanted to print from their mobile phone via infrared, USB and Bluetooth. Fujifilm makes pack film for their passport camera systems, and had been available outside Japan since the mid-1980s. No legal issues arose with Fuji's peeled apart instant films as Polaroid's patents had expired. While very popular in Australia as a cheaper alternative to Polaroid, it was generally not too well known elsewhere due to Polaroid's dominance in most countries. In 2000, Fuji decided to change the way they manufacture pack film, making the entire pack out of plastic instead of a metal and plastic combination. Fujifilm announced at PMA 2003 that pack film would be made available to the North American market with the discontinuation of Polaroid instant film in 2008, Fuji started to export more of their instant film products to overseas markets, starting with making an increased variety of pack films available. In November 2008 the Instax wide format was available in the US with the Instax 200 camera. Instax mini series of cameras and films became available in the US during the second half of 2009, with the Mini 7s. Also an updated Instax 210 replaced the Instax 200. Fujifilm's FAP 100B45 was announced in September 2009 for the US market. The FP3000B45 arrived in the North American market in January 2011, after Fujifilm Japan stopped manufacturing FP100B, but was discontinued in 2012. In late 2012 Fujifilm discontinued FP3000B, followed by the discontinuation of FP100C in spring 2016. A group called The Impossible Project acquired Polaroid's old equipment and factory in Inskeed, in the Netherlands. The impossible mission is not to rebuild Polaroid integral film but, with the help of strategic partners, to develop a new product with new characteristics, consisting of new optimized components, produced with a streamlined modern setup. An innovative and fresh analog material, sold under a new brand name that perfectly will match the global repositioning of integral films. On March 22, 2010, it was announced they were successful in manufacturing instant film compatible with Polaroid SX7600 instant cameras. Two new products were announced, PX100 and PX600. Their PX100 silver shade instant film is a manipulable, monochromatic replacement of old Polaroid brand instant film compatible with SX70 cameras while the PX600 silver shade instant film is compatible with 600 cameras. That formulation has since been supplanted by improved films. As of December, 2015, the Impossible Project produces SX70. 600, and Spectra color and monochrome film packs with a variety of colored borders. They also produce and sell other products which support their film production, such as a smartphone film lab, 
a device which takes a photo of the picture on a smartphone and produces an instant print. In 2016, the project released their first instant camera, the i1, along with accompanying film packs that differ from traditional 600 packs in their omission of the battery, thus lowering costs. Thank you for watching.